Good evening. Welcome to all who of you who have joined us in person or via Facebook, live and on Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please take a moment to ensure that your cell phones are silenced. Thank you. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still, maybe sit up in your seats, put your feet on the ground, just get comfortable and close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that as we play God's the Love That I Am chant. You may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently repeating this mantra to yourself, God is the love that I am. If your mind wanders, which it will, simply bring it back to this mantra, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring you out of the meditation in 10 minutes. Enjoy.
God's the love that I am. As our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and when you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. join me in prayer. <sighs> Recognizing the one, the one power, the one presence, the one principle, God, who is everywhere present, all-powerful, and all-knowing, and God is love. And there is nothing that can separate me from my creator. I am an emanation of the divine. I know this for myself, I know this for every being on Facebook, on Zoom, in this sanctuary, and everywhere else. God is everywhere present, and God is, and us are one. And I speak my word for this service this evening, absolutely knowing that it is divinely guided, and that we are blessed to be here. We are blessed by the presence of our musical team, Sam and Diane, by our lighting and sound, Adam, and by every person that puts on this service, whether they be staff or volunteers, we are blessed by their presence. And I absolutely know that God is channeled through our beloved Reverend Sidney and our guest, Tony Rose. God is spoken through them with love and light and laughter, and we hear exactly what we need to hear, we learn exactly what we need to learn, and it's all done with love and laughter. And I am so grateful for that. And with a grateful heart, I release my word into the law of mind. And, and together we say, Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily strength, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. If we all sing one song, 
one song of love, one song of peace, one song to make all our trouble cease, one hymn, one theme, one hope, one dream. Imagine tomorrow would bring if we all sing one song if we all learn the words just think how great the sound would be since the song is in freedom's key, one voice you'd hear, so pure, so clear. Imagine what tomorrow would bring if we all sing. Just one song that warms our day. The same moon and stars light our way. This little ball whirling in space, it's our only. Thank you, thank you. I love that song. I'm going to ask you to remove your mask. There we go. Is that, did Barry Manilow write that? No. It's, uh, it's the Bergman's and Oh, of course it is. And okay. Wow. Anyway, musician trivia. <laughs> Only not so trivial. Thank you for being here. And would you please welcome the amazing, fabulous practitioner, Tony Counts Rose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> We, um, we live in interesting times, don't we? And I'm really, I, I'm, I'm somewhat verklempt at the numbers that we have in this room right now. I appreciate that you have all shown up because we are in this place of needing to have difficult conversations and uncomfortable conversations. And one of those uncomfortable conversations for most people is race. And we find ourselves where we have hate crimes going on and we have violence against people of different cultures and classes and colors and, and denominations and, and different places on the polarity of life. And frankly, we can't, my feeling, I can't speak for you, but I know that I cannot sit by and, and just put my head in the sand. I can't do it. I've been a spiritual activist for some years. And um, I haven't gotten arrested yet, although I'm, I'm, I, it could happen. <laughs> um, anyway, before we begin and get into the, the uncomfortable stuff, mm -hmm. and maybe it won't be uncomfortable, yeah. 
Maybe not. Would you tell us about your spiritual journey? What led you to this teaching and what brought you into being a practitioner? Thank you, Reverend Sidney. I appreciate you having me here. Even though Gail keeps calling me a guest, <clears throat> I'm not a guest. I think half of you know me, if not most of you know me. But it's an honor to be here. Thank you. So about 30 years ago, I was still struggling with what faith I wanted to practice. And I went first time to Founders on 6th Street downtown. And I went on a Wednesday. And I said, hey, this is, this is great. This yeah. is what I like. And I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe that's a Wednesday. Let me go back on a Sunday. And I went back on a Sunday, and it was the same thing. And I said, you know what? I'm going to join this church. But my friend told me about North Hollywood. So I've been coming to North Hollywood before Dr. Mark was here, before he was Dr. Mark. He was wow. Reverend Mark. Yeah. So I've been coming here a long time. And so I joined here and not Founders. Yeah. But I kept feeling there was something kind of missing. I was going to church on Sundays and maybe once in a while on the Wednesday service because I had to work. So I said, you know, I really believe in these principles and I want to practice this teaching. So I decided to, one of the best way to practice this teaching and apply it is to become a practitioner. So Excellent. I did, Took the, went through the four years of yeah. studying that and my routine every morning is I read, usually the science of mind, I journal, I pray and I meditate. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's just, I could not imagine not having that in my life. It's, and those books travel with me everywhere yeah, I go. Yeah. I understand. Oh my goodness. How long have you been a practitioner? Uh, since 2013. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I just, I love hearing this, the, the origin story yeah. <laughs> of how everyone has, moves into a choice of higher awareness. Right. Um, the, the topic tonight is gracism. And I, the, I've been working with a book and it's called Gracism, The Art of Inclusion. And it's really powerful. It's, it's the languaging, if you decide to get it, just bear in mind that it comes from a, um, a, a traditional, I think he's, um, I don't remember, I think he's probably a Methodist minister. So the, the languaging is more evangelical and, and Christian. So just allow yourself to substitute the word love wherever you find yourself getting hung up on, on some of the language. But the principles are universal. And I love what he said about racism. Um, he says, when one puts a G, capital G, which stands for God, in front of the negative concept of racism, then one has begun identifying solutions and resources to address the race problem in the world. So when, and the, the metaphor across the board is to begin to put God in front of all of it. To remember to put God first, to put spirit first, to put the presence first, to put the idea of oneness before us and to always understand that that's, that's prime. That's, it's like you do first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then, so I just, I have a few quotes, but this is one of them from the beginning of the book, and he <clears throat> writes this, are you a gracist? The heart of a gracist extends a helping hand to those are, who are outside the positive norms of a particular society. While the majority may enjoy the hidden rules of a particular sociological group, gracists build bridges of inclusion for those on the margins. Just as God reached out to Hagar to comfort her in the desert of life, so we can minister though to those who are desperate for someone to hear them and see them. A gracist reaches, reaches across ethnic lines and racial borders to lend assistance and extra grace to those who are different, on the fringe, or marginalized. This person or group can be of any color, culture, or gender. So. I'm a white girl from Newport Beach, <laughs> and um, I have never, as I wrote you when we were talking about this, I've never had the experience of um, walking into um, a setting like a room like this and being the only white person in the room or the only person who looks like me in the room. I never had to have the talk with my son um, who, uh, who looks like me. And, I, and he has been able to walk around town wearing a hoodie 
and I haven't worried about him. I have never been followed in a drugstore. I've never been followed in a market. Um, I have never been profiled driving down the street. So any of the things that I have heard about, read about, seen, and discussed with other people, those are not my experience. But the thing that someone who is not a person of color, someone who looks like me, looks like most of you, need, we need to understand is that just because it doesn't happen to us doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And that's really key. So as you have walked into rooms many, many times, what are the leaps of faith? Or has there been courage? Or have you had to steal yourself? What do you do? What is the mental, the mindset that you have over the years had to develop, or have you had to develop that? Uh, that's a good question. So be prior to becoming a practitioner, yes. <laughs> I would quickly think to myself, as African Americans, or I'm going to say black, because a lot of us my, era, my age still say black, mm -hmm. we feel that we have to make white people comfortable when we walk into the room. So we automatically say, no matter, we're, we could be coming in to, for it, whether it's an interview or whether we're buying an expensive bag and we have the money, but we always feel we have to make them comfortable. Right. And I would give a perfect example how when we walk into the room, we are black first. I am not Tony. I am not female. I'm certainly not white, but I am black first. And from experience, I know this for an example. I went on an interview about 15 years ago, and HR called me that day and said, it's confirmed, and everything is fine, and we will look forward to seeing you at 5 o'clock. Actually, it was a little longer than that. And I said, OK. And I have a name that's either they think I'm male or they think I'm Jewish. So never, Tony, never black, Tony Rose. So they, when I walked in the door, I told the reception, I said, I'm here for my 5 o'clock interview. And she said, well, maybe she's looking at her pen. She says, maybe we have it mixed up because we're looking for a Tony Rose. And I said, well, I am Tony Rose. And she said, oh. Oh, well, let me come back, let me come back. So she went, was gone for about five or 10 minutes, and I'm waiting. She came back and she told me that the job was taken. Oh, oh. And I'll always remember that. And I just sat there and I said, HR just called me today. And she said, I'm so sorry, it's oh. already taken. Um, so I, I, I never even got a chance. And HR did, now they cannot do that now, no. but that was almost 20 years ago. And that's what happened. And that's what we deal with yeah. all the time, whether we male black or white black. It's, it's stereotype and it's ingrained racism. And they decided that, first of all, they assumed that Tony Rose was white male right. or white or Jewish. Right. And, and now she's black. And we don't know what to do. And we're certainly not going to give her this job. Oh. So we deal with it all the time. Mm. And it's, it's very common for us to walk into a room and be the only black. And there's times, I yeah. mean, besides coming here, yeah. even coming here. Yeah, yeah. Besides myself and Brenda, perhaps, we could be the only black at any time on, on, on a service. And, yeah. you know, we're used to it. But we always have in our mind, who do we have to make comfortable? Oh. So they can not have their stereotype yeah. mentality to throw against us. That is, that is such a powerful thing. You know, it's, it's the height of codependency, you know, to make everybody else around you comfortable mm -hmm. before you take care of your own needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, because you're, you're dealing with their problems, their issues. Absolutely, absolutely. Yikes. So how has Science of Mind in any way, um, has it strengthened your, your um, how has it changed it, or has it changed it? It has changed it a lot, but it, but it also has given me courage to do what I'm doing here now, Yes. to be here, yes. to speak up. But what it does give me is to realize that they just don't know any better. Mm -hmm. And it's up to me to um, help them understand, to right. awake them 
without scaring them to as well, mm -hmm. but to help them understand that. And also, my science of mind, my practice my principle has helped me to, when it happens, that I, I, I learn to forgive them. And I'm not saying to forgive them because that's what the black race, we do. Yeah, we do that right. a lot, and we let that be the first thing out of our word mouth when there's a shooting. But if it's for me, so I forgive them because right. in order for me to move on to the next step, I, I forgive them because they do not know. But I have the courage to stand for the truth yeah. and stand for integrity to say, you know, I am going to help you awake right. without, wow. um, yeah. you know, scaring, you, scaring the heck out of you. But you're going to know. Do, uh, I, I, one of the things I did when I asked you to come on here what, to talk with us was I said, um, I don't want this to become um, meet Tony, our token, yeah. but you are kind of Tony, our token I for am. the moment. So, <laughs> right. um, and I accept it. I, and you told me that, and I really appreciated it, because I, I tried to be as, as candid and upfront about mm -hmm. it, because what I, what I wonder is, how often do you find yourself not only responsible for taking care of everybody else in the room, making them comfortable, but also being the one who, someone like me calls and says, educate me, teach me, make me do this better. Does that happen to you frequently? A lot in the yeah. last few years, Yeah, a lot. Um, it, 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 what's happening, what's going on in the world right now in the yeah. last two years, and, and it's an honor. Now, I have friends that don't want to do it. They're angry, and they don't want, but it's an honor for me because it gives me the opportunity to say, hey, this is what needs to happen. And it's not about <coughs> just uh, white American, black American, Latino American, or Asian American protesting, which is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But we need to take it a little bit step further. Yeah. And if you are in a position as a white American to hire us, to give us a chance to interview, to put us on your boards, those are the where, places where you make a difference. Yeah. Uh, to give us a chance. We have all the degrees. We have all the knowledge. We have all the education. And because we are black first, we can't get past your front door. Right. So yes, protest. Yes, write your senators, but if you're in a powerful position, then use that. Yeah. Use, make that happen. Make that, and put us on your boards, like yeah. I said. Yeah. Hire us. Yeah. Uh, when we walk into your markets and your stores, take off your stereotype hats yeah. and give us a chance. Yeah. Make us comfortable for a chance. Yeah, okay, that makes, uh, thank you. You know, if, if we can leverage the, the comfort we have in order mm -hmm. to extend it. In fact, he talks about um, the ways of building bridges of, of reconciliation and understanding. And he has three sayings. Um, and one of them is, I will lift you up. And they're all from, from uh, the Apostle Paul. I will lift you up, special honor and attention, extra grace, especially to those who have been marginalized or are on the fringes. And that sounds like what, what you're talking about, to be able to reach out and, mm -hmm. and to give a hand and to uh, uh, open the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or open as many doors as you can. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, but make it happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like this book, this is great. Go to your book clubs. Let's talk about it in your book clubs. I have, I have friends that have told me all the time, well, I have black friends and I have neighbors who are black. Okay, so, so what? Right. So you have black right. friends. Yeah. But then you go back to Newport Beach and your comfortable place yes, and I'm out of sight, I'm out of mind. Right, exactly. And, and how yeah. I'm not out of sight, out of mind is you have to see me in your employment. You have to see me on your boards. You have to see me at your country clubs and not being a servant. That's how you get to rock, re, tell me yeah. when you are um, black friends. Or if you have black friends and you shared with your black friends, what can I do? Yeah. That's what I tell my white friends. Yeah. Ask the next black person, what can I do? Are you educators? Teach us. That's great. 
but are you going to the next step and you're mentoring young black girls? I, I'm on a board where I mentor young black girls in the inner city. Come with me, be a speaker. Oh, so wow. you can really see what's yeah, going on. Yeah. That empowers those girls. And then guess what? When they graduate from high school, give them internships. That yeah. would help. We're planting seeds, and it's really important to do that. I remember years ago when I first started at this church and, and I was on the board, um, actually, I think I had just gotten my practitioner license. One of the groups that I heard about that we tied to was a group that would bring um, young Israeli and Palestinian children together for a camp in Maine every summer for three or four weeks so that they could learn about each other now. Mm -hmm learn about each other now so that when they grew up, they would understand that they don't have to hate each other. And so we tithed to them, because I, I had, I guess, what they call a, a driveway moment on NPR where I couldn't get out of the car because I wanted to hear right. more about this. And that's a lot of what you're talking about, is, is to do more than, you know, Sydney needs to do more than just have the conversation, but to actually take some action that has meaning right. and has power. Exactly. Um, another saying that he has is, I will cover you. And this one, this is really touching to me. The Apostle Paul said that there are those among us who need, quote unquote, special modesty. Gracism demands that we take those who are marginalized as minorities and ensure that they are covered and protected from embarrassment. Special modesty is the special sensitivity towards minorities in whatever form they may come to this status. White, black, visitors, foreigners, religious, marginalized, disabled, non-assertive, and so on, to ensure that their reputations and dignity are taken into account before, if ever, exposing their weaknesses, blemishes, or vulnerabilities. Does it just feel like basic human respect? It's one of the golden rules. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Treat me like you want to be treated. And, and, and white Americans think they're doing that. They really do. And, but, but it's not happening. It's getting better. The younger generation is kind of helping that make it happen too as well. But we have to be, uh, continue to do it. Yeah. And, and black Americans, we have to continue to be open. And we have to continue to want to educate right. other races right. without anger. So we, or we work and we do that, but, yeah. but you also have to listen. Don't you just sometimes want to go home and, and yell at the wall or throw plates? Oh, I do. Okay, I, don't I would throw hope plates. so. I, I got to keep my plates ready. Right okay, so I I got, yeah, yeah, I know, I like my but, china too. Right. But, but yeah, I do. Yeah. Or I get with my, my friends yeah. and we talk and we, yeah. we say they just don't get it. We're tired of it. Right. Um, but, we, you know, we get back up the next day, we put our, our, our big girls' panties on, and we get out there, and, you know, we go on and make it happen. Because we want the same thing that you want, too, yeah. in life, yeah. too. So sometimes we have to swallow it and let it go. But we're getting into positions now where we can, we can say what we need yeah. to say. Yeah. Um, we, we are tired of playing the game. Well, you're very, it sounds like you have to be compartmentalized. Absolutely. Where are the places where, in your life, where you feel like you don't, where you can just finally go, oh, and let it go. Are there areas? Oh, there are, in my sorority. Mm -hmm. I get to do that. Um, uh, certain people here that I'm around, yeah. I can do yeah. a little bit of that too here as well. Uh, um, probably uh, with my friends, mm -hmm. my family, not work. That's unfortunate, but not work at yeah. all. Yeah. In book clubs, I get to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and I have, you know, like white people will say, I have black friends, but I have friends from all walks of life. Right. Close right. friends yeah. that I can have these deep conversations. So there's a comfort level there. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. So I don't always have to, um, you know, put on those guards and get out there and hold my, you know, say, yeah. okay, I got to play this game again today. Yeah. I understand. Um, or I, I, intellectually, I understand. Mm -hmm. But I haven't most, had the most do. Yeah, as as a woman, I've been in roles where I'm the only woman. Mm -hmm. But it's a different, it's a completely different construct. So, I am the only woman and the only black in most of the, most of my jobs because I'm an auditor, and black people don't do they don't they don't go in that field that often. So yeah. it's very common for me to go into 
a department or an area be the only female and the only black in that yeah. area too yeah. as well. Um, the other thing that he has in here is saying is I will share with you, which is choosing community over comfort, um, assist, choosing to assist someone rather than leave them behind. And he actually tells a whole story of how a friend of his had booked a flight. They were on the same flight and his friend had booked uh, first class, which as it turned out, it wasn't available. He could take another flight seven hours later and have first class. But if, if he wanted, he could fly now with his friend. And he said, oh, I'll fly with him. And, 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 he, and as, he, as the author asked him, he said, why did you do that? He said, well, I'd much rather be with you. I can, I can sit for seven hours and, and hang out with you because I can, I can stretch my legs anytime, but this is more important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so choosing community over comfort. And, and it's who you like to as well. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, most of us in here, we practice the principles as well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we practice them because it makes us feel good. But are you practicing them too as well for the whole general race, everyone? Yeah. Uh, so in order for me to continue doing what I do in life to encourage others, regardless of what race it is, that's why science of mind is so important to me as well. Because it also, like I started out saying in the beginning, it gives me the courage. It gives me the yeah. faith. Yeah. Um, it, it reminds me of my divine integrity, you know, as well, yeah. and, and the intelligence as well. So, you know, here, we also, you know, we're religious scientists, and we practice the faith too as well, but doesn't mean we're not a racist. Doesn't right. mean we're not prejudiced. Yeah. Doesn't mean, you know, we're not stereotyped. So right. Right. if you believe in what we practice here, then step outside that box right. and go to the right. next step and say, hey, who can I bring forward? Yeah. How can I be humble to say, yeah. you know, I'm not going to go along with the stereotype that's been ingrained in part of me for the last 50, 60 years. So in doing that, does that feel like a, um, a, a congruent way for someone like me to be a greater ally? I think so. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then one of the things, because I, I know people like this, there are some absolutists in New Thought who truly feel and believe that activism, where, whether enlightened, quote unquote, or not, is participating in the collective or the race consciousness of limitation, lack, judgment, and fear. What are your thoughts, or what would you say to that? Um, Besides, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think in that area here, that they do lack. There is fear. Yeah. There's fear, and there's and there's is is truly like the um, Palestine and Israeli. To me, that fight is due to lack of understanding, mm -hmm. and and it's the same thing here. You know. We, we, we're around each other, white American, black American, Asian, Latinos, we're around each other all the time, but yet we do not take the time to understand what each other's all about. We just go with what we see on TV, we go with what we've heard, and so there, there is a lot of lack. And, and it's more of a lack of understanding, yeah. and it's more of um, just ignorant. Just, yeah. you know, just will not, not my problem, right, not my right. place, I don't have to deal with this. And that's fair again. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'll, I, it's not a part of my life. I'm in my own little nice little Newport right. Beach area. Right. I got exactly. my own little job, and yeah. I don't have to worry about this. Yeah. That's not my problem. By the way, I left Newport Beach a long time ago. I just <laughs> <laughs> she brought it up, right? She said Newport Beach. That no, but that's her. exactly right. Well, that's you could exactly be in Santa true. Clarita. That's where I live. It's well, the same that's thing. Where I live it's no too different. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it's no different. Um, so I think a lot of it is, you know, we just want to bury our head and say, hey, it's not my problem. Yeah. I don't have to deal with yeah. it. It's their problem. And then when it does become a problem, then, then there's a lot of blame. Well, and the interesting thing, too, is when we're in new thought, we can look at these issues and problems that come up, and we can avoid them. We can say conflict is something that I don't want a part of. That's not part of God. Or we can say this is something that is ready to be revealed. And clearly, we are the ones to reveal it and heal it, or else we wouldn't have noticed it. Exactly. You know, we are the ones to, to birth 
and midwife a, a greater way of being with it. And conflict doesn't have to be a bad thing. No. I tend to want to, you know, go like yeah, this yeah, and yeah. avoid conflict, yeah. but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It, it comes to you because there's something that needs to be acknowledged. Yeah. So when it does show up, when it does happen, we can't just say, oh, oh there goes those people again out there right. doing this. Right. We need to acknowledge what is happening, what is going on. I think curiosity becomes a really powerful tool in that. Because if we can get curious rather than pushing yeah. it away and yeah. afraid. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, are you getting any comments that we should be aware of, Blair, as you are online? Yes. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony, for being here. Of course, Blair. Um, so I'm paraphrasing, of course, and what people are saying here and adding my own thing into it. but. Um, you're talking about all the high-minded stuff and the big stuff, and it's really easy to know the, the stupid things that we do. You know, the walk on the other side of the street, the mm -hmm. treat you, you poorly. Um, what are some of the subtle things that people have done that are just cringe? <laughs> um, like the that, microaggressions? Yeah. yeah. What are some of the subtle things, the small things? Well, I'll give an example of what I went through. Um, I was going for an interview at a time, and they, they wanted to hire me, and the company there in Santa Clarita, and everybody was on board except for the salesperson, so one of the best ways for him not to hire me as a black woman, what, we had the same identical requirements, the same everything, so he said, oh, well, he's working on getting his CPA. My background is accounting, and he's working on getting his CPA, and I said, but those weren't were the requirements. And he says, oh, I know, but you know, that's what he's working on. So it's just kind of subtle things like that. You know, well, we're going to figure out one other way to get the white male in and not get her in. So it's just a little, small little things like that. Um, or language will be changed. All of a sudden, you have, you're doing things, and now the language has changed to where, oh, I can't do that any longer because now, they're, they're put in their, there's a loophole is what I call it. They put in their own words. So it's, it's, it's a little subtle things like that. Mm. And, and the change could come through that morning. It's like, wait a minute, but it was this yesterday. Wow. It sounds like interviews are a challenging thing. Uh, they're challenging for everybody, Always. but they're an extra for you. Yeah. Always. You know, oh, and I just mean all African American, male and female. And that amazes me because when I'm in that kind of position, I just want to get the best person there. I don't care what all oh, those are, but I know there are other people out there that are not the same. Right. That's right. Keep that in mind when the next person shows up, Blair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a book that I'm thinking of right now called How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Um, and it's, I don't know if you have had a chance to, I, I worked with that book a couple of years ago with um, the Northwest region of Unity and we facilitated book groups. And one of the things that was really fascinating was people discovering their own racist behaviors mm -hmm. and tendencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, what, what's happening, I'm saying especially since the last two years, um, is because it's being brought to your attention all the right. time. And now we're saying, you know, maybe, maybe I need to look at this. Maybe. If, if I'm going to work with these people and I'm going to show up with these people every right, day, right. maybe I need to say, let me see what's going on here. Because we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So we need to just try to figure out how we're going to work with each other. So a lot of people are paying attention to that. Yeah. And a lot of people are not. They're well, going the other way. And I want to say that the other half of my statement that I usually say uh, when I'm working with groups and doing equity work and, and social justice is, I'm a white girl from Newport Beach, so if I am going to think that I don't have racist tendencies or, a, or background of limiting ideas about people of color or, or anybody who doesn't look like me, then I'm being an idiot, mm -hmm. basically. I am ignoring the truth. And I'm, I'm, I'm lying to myself, because anybody who has grown up in the Western world, we all have prejudice, whether it's about someone who's short or tall or black or white or Asian or, or Hispanic or skinny or fat or whatever. It, we all have that. And to think that we are immune from it or we've, we've transcended it is such arrogance. It's really uncomfortable to be 
to try to hold that value to like, like, well, no, I'm, I, I have black friends. <laughs> hear that a lot. It's almost a slap in the face. And, yeah. And, and, uh, and so what happens now that you have, when, when people tell me that now, I say, okay, so, and you have black friends and you still don't know what's going on? Mm -hmm. You're still not awoke? Do you actually talk to your right. friends? <laughs> exactly. So I, I, you know, I no longer, yeah. I'm not, I'm not being mean because that's not my nature. No, I know. But I'm also not going to let you off the hook Good. to say, Good. I'm going to pacify you, Tony, to say, yeah. well, I got a black friend, so I got a black neighbor. <sighs> Um, anything else that you want to throw in? Um, I, not on here right now, but um, let me just throw in for, for my personal thing here. Um, I think where I was brought up was, uh, your, your Orange County was the United Nations compared to where I was brought up. Yeah. <laughs> not much diversity <laughs> there. I moved away from it. Um, my son is brought up here in a very multicultural, multiracial thing, place. And his thinking, there's, there's no, no racism in his thinking whatsoever. Mm -hmm. For me, who's trying to be not racist <laughs> and woke, I have to think about all this stuff. Even though I'm here, that's not what I was brought up with. Um, and so some of the things, like I said earlier in the question before, some, sometimes we stumble and it's clumsy, and how do we get out of that? <laughs> I, I think you just need to be truthful, Blair. Whoever you're close to. I mean, with me, if you came to me, I, I would not have any problem. I would be okay. It is my nature to make you comfortable. It is also my culture to make you comfortable. So I would be okay with it. I actually think Michael would be the same way if you went with him to us. I'm just talking folks here at church. Uh, but be honest with them. Find someone that you trust, you know, because if you come at African Americans a different way, black people, they're gonna be like, well, what does he want? What is he after? You know, we're gonna put the hand up. But if you have someone you do trust and say, you know, I, I really wanna understand what I need to do, how I need to, op what, what do I need to say? How can I make you comfortable? Where, where can I go to where, if I'm in a powerful position, to make it happen for that young black man or that young black woman? Ask the questions. We're not going to bite. I don't care what you see on TV. That's, that's TV. That's stereotype. That's what a white American have in their mind. But we're not going to bite. I personally, and not that I'm being prejudiced, I think we're the most forgiving people there is on this earth. Yeah. Wow. So, I, I'm sorry, I lost my mic. Um, <laughs> Is there, before we close, is there anything else that you feel is unsaid or that you would like me to know or anybody to know or, or what is, how can we love you and, on your journey and, and love people who are, are going through this nonsense and pain and suffering? How can we love you better? What you're doing right here, exactly. Keep these teachings. If you don't have them every, every month, every six months, once a year, Keep the teaching. And, and all of us out here, your book clubs, have these conversations at your book club. Have these conversations at your bridge parties, in your, uh, your sororities, your fraternities. Have these conversations. I will come. I, I'm not a public speaker. Actually, I'm fearful of public speaking. I know you all find that hard to believe. But I will come. I will speak. I will talk. Don't be afraid. Don't go leave here and go back and say, not my problem. We are religious scientists. We practice to love and, and see each other all as one. Practice that too every day, not just when you're here in church where you're nice and comfortable or in your home. You know, ask the questions. Don't be afraid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share what I'm going to share with you. And if you insult me or you offend me, I'm going to tell you that too. Yes, Nicely, please. but I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Will you come back? Absolutely. Will you have me? You bet. <laughs> I'll see you yeah, on Sunday. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, my God. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, it, it takes a special kind of courage to be vulnerable. And, you know, fear doesn't go away when you're being vulnerable. Yeah. So thank you so much. You're we so really welcome. appreciate it. You're so welcome. I guess I'm supposed to pray now. <laughs> Actually, you're a practitioner. Uh, no. I'm no? going to let you do that. All right. <laughs> I did my part. <laughs> yeah, you did your part. All right. So let's just take a moment to turn within.
We are on the wheels of a dream. We are riding the crest of a wave that has only just begun to grow. And as we acknowledge that infinite source that is the source and substance of all life, I know that it indeed is the most true thing about each of us. And I choose now to know for us that we are willing to be awake to that, that we are willing to be available in ways that are greater than we have ever been available before. We court and cultivate vulnerability, recognizing that each of us has that precious tender spot within and it is the truth about us for it, it is that light, it is that center which connects us to and as the divine. So from our shared divinity, I know that each of us in this room are awakening and that there is something within us that is willing to reach higher and to reach wider to embrace and to encircle more and more people, more and more lives, more and more ideas that are of a higher nature so that we might truly, truly live together in a sense of deep harmony, deep order, and go beyond lip service into heart service. How wonderful to know that we have the capacity to grow to expand and to learn. And I bless everyone here knowing that we all have the power to bless. And with each blessing that we speak, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. We are calling forth the divinity within that person, within that situation. And so truly right here and right now, we choose to bless this country. We choose to bless those who don't look like us and those who do calling forth the divinity from ourselves to connect even more boldly with the divinity that is within everyone else on this planet so that we might experience and be that, be a peaceful place, a safe place, an available place for wholeness, for healing, for love, for forgiveness, for compassion, for opportunity, for understanding, for leverage, for knowing. We surround this world and we absolutely lend our hearts and our minds and our souls to those beings in Ukraine and Russia who are striving to find a better idea, a higher idea of love. And we lend our hearts and our minds and our souls to all of those people in this country, everyone around this world who has lived under some form of oppression or marginalization. We know that the wholeness of God is greater than that and we we dare to claim, to declare, and to accept that that marginalization is done. It is not of God. Limitation is not of God. We know that God is greater than all of that. So we know that wholeness is now demonstrating and being expressed through all beings everywhere, whether that need be love, employment, creative opportunity, relationship, health, whatever that need be. We know that God has been given great, wonderful, rampant, yes, permission from us to be that within us and everyone else. And so as I know a wholeness for myself, I know that I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And I invite you to say that with me. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless this church, all churches, ashrams, temples, synagogues, mosques, all paths to God, wherever people gather, be it in a place of worship or under a bridge together alone. We know that God is present. We bless that, we call forth the divine, and we say yes to being greater in this presence of love.
I release this word into law, letting it be so, and together we say, amen. amen. I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm here for God, no more struggle, no more strife, with my faith I see the light, I am free in the spirit, yes I'm only here for God, yes I'm only here for God, yes I'm only here for God. As far as this is that wonderful, yes, 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 applaud. <laughs> Sam and Diane, you are so awesome. Part of being here for God and recognizing that we are free in the spirit is choosing to be part of that circle of giving and receiving. So I invite you to take your offering, and if you do this automatically online or you give in another way, hold that idea in your hand. Put it to your heart, and would you say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you all. Hello, I'm ready to do announcements for tonight. So here we go. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give number is inside your program and a QR code is on the back or get your pen ready if you're on Zoom or Facebook. Go to nhcrs.org slash give and you could tithe there or donate there. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after the service, both in person and on Zoom. So if you would like to pray with a practitioner and you're in this room right now, just come on up here, please. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen um, next week is meditation is at 6.50 p.m. and the service is at 7 p.m. Join Reverend Sidney next week as she shares on the topic, your superpower spiritual vision. Ooh, that's going to be great. Now, I can't wait to hear what I say about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs>
Dr. Mark is doing another trip, um, a Japan trip, October 2022. Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today. I've taken trips with Dr. Mark. It's life-changing. They're just wonderful, wonderful. I really encourage you to go. Living a Course in Miracles. This group, facilitated by practitioner Jeannie Laporte, meets tomorrow evening, Thursday, June 16th from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. on Zoom. All are welcome. The Zoom link is on nhcrs.org. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Prayer, pray like you've never prayed before. Rock Your World is Reverend Sydney's brand new six-week How to Pray class. Join Reverend Sydney starting June 28th for this transformational class where you'll learn affirmative, powerful, and effective prayer. Sign up on our website today. Cost is $175. Required texts will be available in the bookstore this week or online. I'm in the bookstore on Sunday. Come see me. I'll be happy to sell you a book. And actually, it's called Rock Your Word. Rock Your Word. I yeah. said world. Everybody oh my does. God! Oh, rock your word. Because we speak our word, but then we're going to learn how to rock our word. I saw world, but rock your word. Does. Is the name of the book "Rock Your Word" also? No. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thought I'd ask. I want to ask what the name of the book is. The Five Principles. The Five Principles is the name of the book. And I'll sell it to you on Sunday. Come on by. <laughs> love and Kindness Ministry. Our Love and Kindness Ministry will be serving lunch in the park this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. to people who are homeless and others. Please sign up on the patio after the, tonight's service. So the patio is right up there. Sign up and you can help serve homeless and others. Save the date, July 3rd. We are celebrating the holiday weekend with a free barbecue after the 1130 service. Join us for delicious food, fellowship, and music by Mary Hyland and Gilbert Acuna. If you or a loved one could use some enhanced spiritual support, we have a pastoral care team ready to help. Please reach out to our team through our website. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation, every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 a.m. through 8.15 a.m. So visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events, or to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newspaper newsletters. Thank you. She's good, right? Um, before we go, we have one more thing to do. Um, on Friday, Adam's having a birthday. Our sound person. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Awesome. So we want to just thank you for being here and doing that. We had Liz Racy holding vigil. Melissa K. Allen was helping us with Facebook. Mark Kroll and Lynn Romanowski were on as Zoom and, and NC, NHCRS hosts, respectively. Luana greeted you at the door. Doreen, Nikki, Brenda, and Blair are the Sanctuary Media team. Yep. Diane Vincent is a goddess, and she sang like it. Sam Krieger, you're a rock star. Gail Palat, you are a, um, 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 an evolved being, as are we all. I'm Reverend Sydney. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful week. Let's have coffee. Let's get up and sing Blessed Always just one more time.
Yeah.